Hello, everybody. Tourist in the Iowa Great Lakes. Um, if you want to get away from home and and enjoy the outdoors and the lakes, you know, come and visit us because uh, this is the time to be here. Um, it is. It's it is. not uh, three foot of snow and thirty below <laughs> like we have sometimes. This is um, probably the most beautiful time of the year, and uh, we have the boats are in, or the lakes are in full swing, and we got yeah. boats everywhere and. Yeah, all the restaurants are open. Great menus. Um, it's pretty nice place to be, and it's going to be short-lived because we're already <laughs> halfway through June, and next will be the Fourth of July, and pretty soon Labor Day, and then we got to do it all over again. But the days anyway, start yeah. getting shorter. A week. Oh man. A week from now, the days start getting shorter. I'm depressed every time I hear that <laughs> on the news. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, in, come up and enjoy the Great Lakes. I mean, it's if. Any of you in the Midwest, um, I know a lot of you that are throughout different parts of the country mm -hmm. probably have never heard of it, but uh, this is the, the gems of Iowa, yeah. and it's a pretty place around here. Yeah. Um, three weeks ago, I think, was the last <laughs> time we were with you, and uh, we showed you how to pattern a walleye in mm -hmm. this kind of a walleye project. We're going to go from, um, you know, all the way through start yeah. to finish. Each segment will feature another portion of the um, mounting process and last week we took a walleye and made a pattern of it. Um, the pattern looks somewhat like that and you can um, tune in on our YouTube video mm -hmm. and see how we did that. <clears throat> you can't make, um, are we working? <laughs> you can't make uh, anything look, uh, everybody says what's the hardest thing to hardest thing to do is the thing you know the least about. Um, if you know that this fish is X inches long mm -hmm. and you know that he's Y inches around and you know the walleye shape, um, you're probably falling last week. And we also talked about um, purchase bodies um, yep. from a manufacturer, and this is a walleye body, and if you uh, would prefer doing this and not make your own bodies, um, you can buy these right from the catalogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a fish on fish form by Brett Winfield mm -hmm. and Tim Perkins. Yep. And um, these are just a great, great um, looking walleye. It's in an S curve. And there's a lot of different positions um, when you buy these. Some of them are, um, I call them C curves, where they mm -hmm. head the tail and out from the wall. You can reverse that so the head and the tail is into the wall, maybe swimming yeah. around a piece of driftwood or some rocks. Um, you can do a uh, reverse curve, you know, where he's head yeah. and tail curved into the wall. This is an S, kind of, I don't know, we call it a, if you ever watch a fish, they kind of undulates the way yeah. I, I would say. Um, as they swim, there's a motion to them, and this can be an S-curve with the head out, or you could take this very, fi very fish mannequin, and you can make an S-curve with the head in and the tail out. Yep. They're pretty versatile. Um, also, with the button bodies, you're going to want to take careful measurements, and every mm -hmm. catalog's going to have a legend in it, and it's going to show you um, probably the overall length. It'll show you different people measure from different different areas. Yours is from the center of the eye to the base of the tail, yep. is that right? As well as the circumference. Um, sometimes there will be a weight listed, so um, you might your, your uh, measurements might line up pretty good and it might yep. say eight pounds and your fish was maybe nine and a quarter, so you know that, that this is gonna have to be built up mm -hmm. a little bit. These can be 
built up with clay, mache, or foam, if you're real careful. Mm -hmm. They can also be rasped down. Yep. Um, for those of you that aren't afraid to alter forms, you can change the position of these. Um, you can take a little spacer out if you wanted to shorten mm -hmm. them up. There's, these are pretty versatile also. But, um, so, so even if we were planning on using a, a bought mannequin, we always like to do this anyway, because that will show us, once we open the box from the supply company, that'll show us how close we are. Yep. And we can make this bigger, smaller, according to our paper pattern. Also, okay. um, that paper pattern, sometimes you may not be able to find. You think, you're, you think something's gonna work really, really well, but when you get it out of the box, or maybe you go through the catalog and you can't find it, you have this to fall back on. Whereas yeah. if you skin the fish and didn't take any measurements, um, you're gonna have to guess. And some of you fish taxidermists over the years have gotten pretty darn good at guessing, mm -hmm. but it's awful nice to have some, a nice set of measurements. Yes. So that's, uh, you have to make decision, bought and body um, or a carved body. And that's what we're gonna spend our time on today. We're gonna show you how to, how to craft your own walleye mm -hmm. body. Doesn't matter if it's a walleye, a northern pike, you know, large mouth, small mouth, bluegill, whatever it is. Um, it'll take a little practice if you've never done it before. Some of you are way proficient at it. Some of you would, can do this process way better than we can. But um, we, we use um, styrofoam to carve most of, our, mm -hmm. most of our fish bodies. And we'll tell you a little bit about the foam. This we refer to as fish foam, and it comes in a block, I think it's four feet by maybe six inches by 16. 16. And this is a, a one and a half pound density foam. It's a very soft foam. I can stick my fingernail into it. Um, you can dent it, you can break it. When you start um, carving little intricate throat latches and and tails, um, you're going to want to be gentle because you can bust those portions off. Um, now with a block of foam like this, just picture how many of these you can get out of there. I mean, we could get one, and we could get two, and we could get three, four, probably five different fish out of mm -hmm. here, four big ones anyway, um, which makes this a pretty economical way to mount fish as long as you don't have a lot of mistakes, yeah. um, failures. So the more accurate you get and the more attractive bodies you carve, um, this can be a real um, economical way and a time saver. You don't have to wait for um, the supply companies to send it to you and you can, you can custom make any kind of a body you want. Um, the foam that we use is six inches wide and it will it will accommodate um, most of our fish even our big so, muskies yeah. and northerns which run almost six inches wide um, if you curve them in the tail portion and the head portion you can come up with a real nice nice looking fish um, very rarely do we have to uh, do we get a fish that's wider occasionally we do and um, then it might take a special order type of a piece of styrofoam. Mm -hmm. So from this, now remember we talked about the last time we, we showed you how to make the pattern. Remember we laid the fish down on the paper. We took one of the grease pencils like this. We have the fine, nice grease mm -hmm. pencils now, which will give you a finer line than the meat market ones, which mm -hmm. we used to use. And we trace that fish on the paper. Remember, I think Brett talked to you about the thickness of that pan. Don't, don't tip it out and realize that, that that's gonna give you about a quarter inch larger mm -hmm. fish. So trace what you see the fish's size to be. Don't tilt the pan in, don't tilt the pan out. Um, that's kind of important because when you get all done, it's actually possible to make this fish three quarters of an inch oh, yeah. higher and three quarters of an inch wider than what he was. So once you have a pattern, and, and you can always test it, you can take calipers 
um, once you get your pattern drawn, go ahead. This fish was um, six inches tall. I can set six inches on here, double check my pattern. If I'm consistently a quarter inch big, that's great just so you know that your body is going to be a quarter inch big and you're going to have to compensate for that at some point. Okay, we take the fish's pattern, lay it down on the edge of the paper or on the centerfold. I'm just going to use these zero pins, pin it in place. Now again, you can use your grease pencil to trace mm -hmm. around it. Um, my favorite way is to use the back of my knife because it um, gives me a very thin line. And I'm just carefully inscribing that fish's profile onto my styrofoam. If it gets a little wiggly, I just kind of went outside my lines a little bit. Um, when I get to the bandsaw, I will fix that. Now I'm just dragging the back of my knife. Don't use the blade of your knife, the sharp edge because it won't leave you a line that you can follow. And it's interesting when we have a taxidermy school, the students a lot of times will take a fish pattern like this and they'll put it in the middle of a <laughs> uh, piece of styrofoam yes. like that. Kind of conserve your styrofoam and have several bodies at one time so you can arrange them on the styrofoam in an economical way. Okay, I think I'm all the way around. And that left me a, a faint outline, I don't know if you can pick that up with the camera, um, that I could cut out on the bandsaw. Now some of you won't have a bandsaw, and I think you have a nice little saw over there that would yeah. work. Um, this, this is a good foam saw for not, if you didn't have a bandsaw, you can um, carefully cut that fish's profile out. Another saw we use sometimes is that keyhole saw. Yep. Um, it's a regular wood saw with kind of a coarse blade. Um, I've seen people use electric knives. Yep. There's all different methods. Once you have a bandsaw, um, you'll appreciate how efficient it is and you can cut, we'll just cut the block, you know, a little extra out around the fish then we'll just follow our tracing around the whole fish. Okay, and to save time, just like the cooking show, you grab that, this is what you'd end up with. Do I need to make the sound effects? The saw? Yeah. <laughs> uh, a short story, a long time ago, um, I went up and there was an airplane, model airplane store in town here and they cut out airplane wings oh. and they had a hot wire and it was so slick I thought man to cut out fish bodies with a hot wire can't be beat mm -hmm. and so we tried to make one but this type of styrofoam does not that's kind of a closed cell styrofoam I guess I'd call it and uh, it doesn't work with the hot wire it kind of turns into a vile evil smoke um, now this is the one and a half pound density carving foam. It comes in different hardnesses and um, for me a, a one and a half pound or two pound is a one square foot cubic block. One cubic foot block mm -hmm. weighs two pounds. Okay. If it was ten pound density, which we also have ten pound density foam, not in the block, but in the liquid form, one cubic foot weighs ten pounds. We also have, I think it's called billet foam. It's blue and it's yeah. what you see in flotation docks. It's a little larger celled foam than what we have here and a lot of taxidermists use that. We sell it as dustless fish foam and mm -hmm. you'll notice that when you're working with this type of a foam it gets everywhere. I have it on my hands, have it on my clothes. I'll be covered with styrofoam yeah. dust that's very very fine. If it gets in your eyes it stings, you have to wait for it to tear out. 
Yes. Um, if you're worried about the, the dust from the fish carving foam, we always used to take um, static, static guard, guard. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Static guard, like you get from the grocery store for your dryer, and you can spray your clothes with static guard and your arms, and uh, this doesn't stick it to does you. Help. It works pretty it good. It does help, yeah. Um, so any of you that don't like, don't like working with this type of a styrofoam, um, get yourself some static guard, and if mm -hmm. that doesn't do it, the, the open cell, the blue billet foam, which we call yeah. dustless foam, um, the particles are much heavier and they fall right to the ground. They don't yeah. get in your eyes and that sort of thing. So, so far, what we've done is do a side profile. Mm -hmm. Now, what we like to do is look at the customer's directions. This fish, the customer wants it cut on the right side and head to the left. So, this is going to be the show side of that fish mm -hmm. to the viewer. Am I right? Yep. Head to the left. And it goes with another fish. Um, so we're going to cut him on the right side here. And would you want to show them how to do the top sure. profile? Sure. Sure. After you pick up my tools. Um, what are you thinking for a curve? Would you um, like him? Um, I don't know. I, I like this. A little S Maybe curve? Maybe a little soft S. This okay. is just an attractive attractive pose and that is it that shows a lot of motion that works well and so and because that is something that we're going to determine we can determine the the curvature of the spine anywhere within the space of this foam so it's kind of nice we have some um, we have a lot of freedom here to make him whatever shape we want to which is nice for for uh, carving your own fish bodies. I might borrow your... I think, um, um, your, I think uh, uh, that fish market, is yeah. only maybe four inches wide on the pattern, was it? Um, four and three quarters. With, there's a four. Yep. Yeah, might get... To so you've got six, you got plenty yep. of room to play Lots with. Lots of room, yep. So this is our viewing, our show side, our viewing side, and a lot of times we like to put the head out into the showroom with an S curve. So, um, yeah. So in that case, we'll start this way. And I'm gonna start just a little bit off of center. So if I were to just imagine my center line right there, I'm gonna start a little on this side of center. And we're just gonna give him an arbitrary S. And I think the best way to show you is this way. I'm just going to bring that down and we'll bring the tail back just slightly. Remembering that most of the, of the movement in the fish body is going to occur from here to here, not necessarily in the belly portion of the fish. He's not going to move a lot up there. And fish don't have a neck, so he's not going to turn his head sharply in one direction or another. Just a soft curve. Something like that. Good. I like it. That work? Yeah. Um, and do we want to transfer some measurements? Sure. Now, as you're doing this, and if you've never done it before, um, and you want to learn how to carve bodies, um, it's very beneficial to have something like this yeah. in your little reference pile, provided the person that made these, you know, knows what they're doing. and. Uh, Tim and Brett made, I mean, this is as accurate as you can get. This is an excellent, excellent walleye body. And if I were carving my own walleye body and had that lay in there, if I can copy that onto there, um, I bet I'm going to have a piece yeah. of styrofoam that looks like a walleye. Yeah, it gives you a nice rough start. Of course, um, another helpful aid is to have the real fish, too. If they haven't sure. skinned the real fish, have him laying on the table next to you, and that way you can look at him for size and shape and proportion. Um, Right now, we're going to turn him around here so you can see measurements. And we'll just bring those measurements up from where they were taken on the body. And we're going to transfer them up here to the top, to the center line. And that center line just represents the curvature of the fish and basically the spine of the fish, sort of. Yeah, yep, just basically the spine of the fish. So 
Um, the first one that we've got right here is three and a quarter inches. I'm gonna use this trusty ruler. Bring it back to you guys there. And we'll just take three and a quarter with the calipers. And then we're going to bring it up to the top. And in doing that, ideally we'll bring that measurement perpendicular to the center line of the fish. So if the center line is curving this way, we're going to split the difference and go perpendicular to that and make marks. I'm just going to push those little marks. And for, for you to see them at home, we'll put a little dark spot there that and we'll go down the whole length of the fish and repeat that looks like the next one is three and a half which makes sense he's getting bigger as he goes back so ask yourself if you have some crazy measurements on there if you were to get two and a quarter after you just did three and a half he'd be really sunken in and does that make sense um, probably not maybe we've got a different something confused in there so we'll just take the ne next measurement down the line Three and a half. I don't know if you can see that, Andy. And keep going. Four. Anything I'm forgetting to tell them other than tighten their calipers? I well, just, <laughs> my calipers um, just got loose. As you take measurements on the fish, um, you can take as many or as few as you want, and you can take them anywhere that you'd like to, but at this point you want to know where you took them. Whether yeah. you took them, you know, before his bent or at his clave or bone, just kind of be familiar as to where you took them and duplicate okay. that on the styrofoam. Yeah. So four, we'll go back here to three and a quarter. back to three and these are important measurements here notice how much change we went from three and a quarter to three inches within the span of maybe a half an inch um, so that's quite a bit of change to the body shape and two Now, you want to show them connect the dots? Connect the dots, yeah. I'm going to need my dot connector. There you go. Uh, all right, so now, now, hand me that calipers. You notice that when, when Brett punched these in, the measurement you want is the inside of the little gouge. So when he put it here, um, although my my gouge goes out that way, it's that inside that I want to keep track of. So, all I'm going to do is go from dot to dot to dot. And at this time, if there were any measurements that you thought maybe shifted left or right, if you weren't perfectly on the center, um, you could straighten them out with your lines here. You want nice flowing lines. Okay, now, um, I like to bring these lines right off of my my head area because we left the extra we left this extra to go up into the brain mm -hmm. cavity we're going to clean out that whole skull and there's not going to be much more left there than skin and we're going to have that styrofoam 
to kind of hold our, our head up where we want it. And then on the bottom, I'm going to put a little center line mark right on that bottom so that I don't accidentally come around here and cut that off. Okay, what do you think? Looks good. Cut it out? Yeah. Okay, now, here again, if you have a bandsaw, it's really nice to lay this on the bandsaw and just cut your, prof your top profile out. If you don't have a bandsaw, um, just your, your little saw over there, you can do a great job with that at this point. You know, that'll, that'll cut just fine. And incidentally, most of these bandsaws that you get for your shop only have a six inch throat. Mm -hmm. This fish, I wouldn't doubt, is approaching. Oh, he should be six, shouldn't he? Looks like he is six at his highest point. Ooh, he's, this one's, because of our pencil lines and stuff, yeah. is about six and three eighths. So it's gonna be kind of a little trick to get him in the bandsaw since our throat is only six inches. If we get mm -hmm. a big musky or especially salmon are tough, we can't use this on our sand, our uh, saw here, we do have another wood wood saw that's a little bit bigger, but then we would use uh, like the Irwin saw sure. like this, yep. or the keyhole saw. Okay, I'm gonna cut this out, and that's gonna be the top profile, and when I get done, I should have a left turn fish head out, but he's gonna be kind of square. And then we're yep. gonna show you how to get the square edges off, square yep. corners off. And this one we didn't have already pre-cut, so he's going to, Tom will cut this out, you'll hear the saw, we didn't drag it over, but. That way I don't have to make the sound effects. Is it gonna go? <laughs> Just going under. And some of those bass that have a tall profile will struggle with it with that spot too, just right over the belly. Uh, he's just about got it cut. <laughs> just about got it cut. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we'll start taking the square corners off of it. We've cut from the top view, so we'll be flat here. We have this flat side. And the next view will be cut this direction, but it's still going to be square like a block, like this. So we will show you how we're gonna start taking the square corners off of that. And we'll do it right now. Okay, now here's, here's the s shape fish, left turn, head out. Um, the only thing we got to deal with now is the square corner. That was so tight on the saw, <laughs> the big old walleye, and I had to rock it, it through the saw. So if you don't have a band saw, and you're going to get one, um, see if you can't get one with six and a half is way better than six. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Most fish will fit under six and a half um, until you get up into your big pike and muskies and so forth, but um, this one seems, this one just made it. Um, so there's a few steps that we like to take now um, in getting prepared for, for, the, next, for the next shaping. Um, one thing you'll notice is that because we turn the head on a slight angle, the, the pattern was cut square on a flat table this way. Because the turn of the head goes this direction, we actually have a longer cut on this side than we do here. And you'll notice it most from the top. This angle here is not perpendicular to the center line. 
So we need to square up the head and the, and the throat. And to do that, we'll just take this back here, perpendicular. And we'll do the same thing here, the same thing here, and the same thing on the inside. Otherwise, we get too long of fish probably, huh? Yeah, I, I'm sure I didn't explain that very well, but well, that's, a, that's a odd no, phenomenon that clear as mud. <laughs> clear as mud. Um, so all I'm going to do is you notice that that would move this forward um, a good quarter inch. I'm just going to cut down there and square that up, square this up, and square the tip of the throat latch up to the center, to the center line. And technically you would have to do the same to the tail, but that's such a minor amount. We won't have to do much with that. What's next? I'll take some corners off and then you can put the wing field touch to it. Um, okay, now, what's interesting, when you, you took all these measurements, and your measurements tell you that this fish is four inches wide, so I can put this on there, measure it, or check it on there. I'm a little bit bigger, but, but pretty close. Four inches wide. This tells me I'm six inches tall, mm -hmm. so ideally he should fit, right? Well, the reason he doesn't is because we haven't checked the circumference yet. And your circumference on this fish, before you do anything to it, to take the corners off, the circumference is 17 inches, and I've got over 21. You know, so I've wow. got four inches so that I have to take off on yep. these corners. Um, my method, is this the Ricky Crane twist and turn? Flip and twist. Flip and, and twist. <laughs> um, the first thing I like to do is drag center lines on here. Um, you can mm -hmm. do, you can put it on with your little, with your little pencils if you want to, or you can drag it on with your, with your knife. But I know that that fish, is, my pattern is four inches wide. I mm -hmm. don't want to get rid of this or I'm getting smaller than four inches. Yep. Same over here. If I start messing with that and it goes away, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm making my fish body smaller than what he was. Yep. Same on the belly and the back. Six inches height, I want to, if I start sanding those off or trimming them off, I'm gonna be mm -hmm. getting them smaller than that. So. Then I just take off four corners. Oh, I need a good knife, don't I? I, have a <laughs> knife. I didn't know I was going to be doing it. And if your knife is hunking out big hunks of styrofoam, um, you need to sharpen it. And the fillet knife, those fillet knives work really good for this. They do. They do. It should cut really smooth. do this, you're going to be amazed that this square piece of styrofoam starts looking a little fishier with every single cut. Okay, and then, touch up my knife here a little bit. And then I've taken off four corners, one, two, three, four. Then I start taking off the corners from my corners. Now no matter how flat of a fish you have, like a crappie for instance, uh -huh. a crappie people think of as a very flat fish. They still only touch a straight edge basically at one, one point. So even though they look like a flat fish to you, they're not They're flat, not flat. flat. Yep. The uh, curvature is just less. Yeah. Careful. <laughs> and it does make a big difference. Um, the sharpness of your knife will make this project very, very, very simple or 
or it will uh, hold you back a little bit if you're not really sharp. And I'm just working more to a, a nice curved surface. And as I'm doing this, I'm getting rid of this big flat spot. Mm -hmm. And not only the flat spot on the on the sides, but also this big flat spot on its belly too. Mm -hmm. Needs to go. And you're going to want to be familiar with um, fish shapes. If you're, you know, every once in a while when we teach students, students that have handled fish their entire lives, they know what kind of shape they want for a yeah. walleye. People who haven't um, don't know the difference between a walleye and a bass, and they're very distinct shapes and. They're heavy in different areas. And this is where if you have your fish body or your real fish in front of you, this is very helpful because now you're interpreting shapes and anatomy. Um, and you can add any detail you want to that you're willing to shave in. And you're kind of, I always tell people that carve fish bodies, you're a sculptor. And they say, oh, I'm not a sculptor. You really are. You're, mm -hmm. You are every bit of a sculptor as Michelangelo working in marble, but you're working in something much softer and much easier. Um, but nevertheless, you're going through the same process. Um, you're using a reference. You're using um, measurements, using calipers. Now, just to give you an idea of how much I've taken off, not, not near enough yet, but we were at 21 and a half, almost 22 inches. Just by taking off the corners, um, I am now at 19, so I'm almost, halfway almost, there. Yep. you know, a couple inches off already, yep. just like that. Does that give you something to work with? Absolutely. That was a dull knife. <laughs> that was a nice, sharp knife. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to, I'm just going to kind of continue on, if you want to keep um, explaining with them, I might um, narrow the thin, fin bases just a little bit here. I'm going to do that. We included the fin bases here because we're going to skin them just as nice and pretty um, and remove all of the cartilage and fin base from the skin. So we're going to include that anatomy on the mannequin. And I'm just, I just took my knife right down the top here and left myself a nice little fin base. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And you can see that is present there on the commercial body as well. Now in a lot of the commercial bodies, and yours are sculpted right in and molded right mm -hmm. in. And some fish have pronounced thin bases and muscling. Um, some fish, not so much. You know, every once in a while you have one that you can't really tell, and some of them are pretty heavy. But on this body, this is the part that Brett's carving in right now. It comes to a real narrow crest muscle that that soft dorsal fin will lay on. Is that you? I've been busy working. I have to Nothing. It looks just like that. Another couple of observations you can make is this tail section, this caudal section from the back of the dorsal. The soft dorsal is kind of square. It's, it's about as wide as it is tall. Um, and it's fairly flat across the top. So we don't want to take as much off right here 
as we do through this section. Right over the dorsal, that's fairly narrow. Um, and so that's going to be angled a little bit more. But when we get to this caudal section, we're going to leave that a little bit flatter on top. I'll just come down here and see if we can get from 19 to 17. Got a ways to go. We just got a little shaving to do. Now something you're going to notice is we like to carve our bodies. And I always say, and I think we described to you how we'll take the fish skins, get them all cleaned up, ready to mount, sprinkle them with salt, put them in a tub, and they go in the freezer. And we pull them out little by little all the time. And, um, you know, like five or six fish, and then we'll, you know, mount those. Well, what you'll notice that is if you carve this body exactly to the measurements that you have here, there's a good chance that your fish skin is going to be a little too tight. Your body's yep. going to be a little too big. And I have never come up with a real accurate way of doing it, but but what goes inside of the fish, because of the fish skin thickness, yep. may be a half inch off from your fish skin. Yeah. So don't be surprised when you go to mount the fish and your measurements all line up, you stick it in and you got a big gap in the back. That's because mm -hmm. we measured the outside of the fish and there's that thickness of skin all the way around. Which on a walleye can be awfully thick. A yes. little trout might not be, might be almost negligible, but a, a big walleye, that's going to be a very, very uh, considerable amount. Somebody on YouTube, and they are wondering if it is easier to start with a smaller fish. Oh, sure, but but a smaller fish still has all of the details that a bigger fish does. So it's less foam to mm -hmm. mess up if, you, if something doesn't go right. Um, but you still want to be very accurate with the smaller fish. Yeah, and sometimes even though smaller fish, because because it's small. If he's four or five inches long, an eighth of an inch being off just by as much as a, a as much as an eighth of an inch can make a significant difference. Where if we were off by an eighth of an inch on this size fish, it might not have near as critical a, a, an issue. I know that little bitty bluegill or little crappie are are tough to mount just because they're harder to get your fingers in for skinning and thickness of your pen and pencil. So. Sometimes those smaller fish are even more challenged than people think. And don't be afraid of carving your your own fish. You know, like uh, we talked about, you can get five um, of those big walleyes out of here. If this was smallmouth or largemouth bass, you could probably get 15 out of a block like this. Oh yeah. And and when you first start it out, you're going to have some that don't quite match the large mouth shape or the small mouth shape. Um, don't be afraid to do another one, you know, and pretty soon you're going to get good enough at it that every one that you do is going to look like the species yeah. you're attempting to mount. Well, I don't know that I'm to 17 inches, but we're starting to take some down. Um, another nice tool to show them too might be um, the foam rasp when you're trying to take down larger amounts of, of material. Um, don't be afraid to use your, use your rasp as well. It's a little rough, um, but it will remove material fast and can help you smooth out some of your lines. Yeah, don't, don't be afraid of small imperfections, dips and dents because this rasp will even everything out for you. Yeah. And you can put a lot of detail in with it also. And we'll even come back and go finer yet. Make him real pretty. And that already looks very nice. Yeah, he's getting he's getting there. I bet he's still 18 inches though. I don't see a big enough pile of dust. Um, this will help you. Carbon fish bodies, I think, has helped 
when we started out, us, my deer, elk, giraffes, everything, Absolutely. because it's all about shape, smoothnesses, measurements. Um, That's I think very part true. Of fish, um, transfers into birds, it transfers into game birds, transfers into absolutely yep. everything. So um, don't be afraid to perfect the fish carving technique. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know, I think fish guys are a rare breed because there are so many things that we have to know in doing the fish potion, but it sure makes, it sure makes you a nice, well-rounded taxidermist. Um, one thing to notice, we've stayed away from these center lines that Tom put in place, just so we know that we still have the true measurement that we had from our form. We're still the same height and we're still the same width. So now we're just working off the edges. Do you want to put See some perfecting? Went, should we do it or is it not time? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it'll impress anyone yet. <laughs> I think we're, oh, we're getting oh, close. Oh, oh, what did we need? 17. Look at that, 18. We're, an in, we're only an inch off. Um, hand me one of your rasps. That's yeah. another one of my favorite tools when you get into this. Um, you know, when, you're, when you've already roughed it down and you're afraid you don't want to go too far too fast, um, these cut salt rasps are really nice. And they're, they come in, what is it, a medium and a coarse, I think? Coarse and a fine, coarse maybe. Coarse and a fine. Um, they're really handy and you can go, it's, it's carbide and if they load up with anything, we use them a lot on Bondo, if they get covered with Bondo you can soak them in lacquer thinner and they're like brand new the next day. Um, really a great, great tool for the tax from the shop. But this kind of, now that sure form, that form rasp um, kind of takes things down pretty fast. This smooths down a little bit that process, makes it smoother yet, and um, without taking him, without shrinking him down too much. And again, like Brett said, I'm staying away from that four inches wide, but look at how far we've come. I, I from that great big flat surface on the side, my flat surface now is the small, the size of a Arm and Hammer or a Oscar <laughs> Mayer leader, Arm and Hammer leader. Um, it's little, and and that's what you want. Work yourself towards that center line, but keep it there. Same on the belly. Okay, then in the interest of time here, um, it's time at some point to um, deal with the throat latch mm -hmm. and the head. And I like to sketch this on here. And if you have the real fish, lift up his gill flap and pay attention to what this looks like. Now we already have the link, so we know it goes out to here. And I'm just going to do a little center line. And we know that that throat latch and that brisket area widens out pretty fast at the cleatherm bone. So I just sketched that in. I have to be at my full width right here. And I have to be at a point right there. So I would take Oh, sharp one. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Save me in the nice department. Now here's here's that point where we said you can you can uh, break it if you're not careful. So once you taper this down to a point, make sure that you um, are gentle with it around the table and your legs as you're sanding. Okay, then I go back to the rasp and keep looking at your real fish. If you haven't skinned him already, pay attention what this looks like. Um, the bottom of this tends to be a little on the flatter side. 
as it gets right up into the throat. I was looking for that the other day. Uh, as it gets up into the throat latch, uh, it gets to be a little rounder. And this happens to be a reference cast that we made of exactly that area. So that's what Tom's recreating now. And pay attention to where the gills lay and how they lay because right in here in this cast you can see there's a, I guess I'd call it a nest for the gills. Yeah. It's a very, very thin membrane and if you put your gills on a bulged out piece of styrofoam, they're gonna, it's gonna look like a bullhead in the head. Yeah. Um, those gills have to nestle in here very, very neatly in the exact spot that they're supposed to go. And this works really good for me for this purpose. Yeah. And then, when you made this pattern, I noticed you have a little mark where his cleatherm bone was, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. Um, we like to take a knife or some kind of tool and make a little punch right through the paper. And that's going to be, I'm going to draw it first, um, your cleatherm bone, which you will leave when we skin that fish, is going to come back all the way to that spot and it's going to go out into the throat latch like that. Oh, if you can leave yourself a little curb that that clathrin bone will lay on, it makes it very handy to mount your fish and everything lays where you want it to. So I'm just going to cut this in like this. Now I only went about a quarter inch deep. Now I'm going to come in from the front. And that gives me, um, I don't know how deep I have to go yet. And I don't know if I'm in the right spot, but I'm probably pretty close. Mm -hmm. So when we test fit this fish, we're going to slide that clay therm bone on here and we can push it in with our fingers real hard take the skin off and you will have aren't quite the right shape yet. So that's how we go from there. Do you want to show them the sponge? Take part? them one more step down. At this point we would probably narrow him up a little bit, check our tail width, a few other areas, but he would be about ready for test fitting. Once we've test fit him and we know close, We'll actually take a sanding sponge. What would you say this is? A medium? 120-ish. Yeah, hours. yep. Um, and we'll just take all of those rough marks out with the sanding sponge um, going kind of against the, the contour. If we most of our knife marks went this direction, um, we'll make sure and go around in this this fashion to take those corners down and at this point we should be able to slightly go over the top of our center marks because we also have remember the thickness of skin that's going to make a little difference too so we're going to go over this and just try to get those big high spots knocked down with the sanding sponge this this will be your final your final final and this will really pretty up the body and uh, take all of those rough marks out. Now what about the person that, that uh, just wasn't paying attention and they made a big old gouge in the side of their fist and now they think they ruined their $10 piece of foam. Oh, they should call the supply company and buy a new box of foam. <laughs> um, no, that's a really good because you can get too narrow, you can get too um, too short, and you can alter this. We can't the foam back to distances. Most foam is pretty hard, so going from hard to soft often creates an edge. Um, another really good method is to 
it, if for instance we were too short, if we took a big chunk out of the bottom, we could put a wedge, cut this from top to bottom and slide another piece of this in between, and clamp it together and then recarve that bottom area, we'd have the bottom brought back down um, and that would work pretty good too. What else would you do? Yep, yep, clay, um, mache, mache, maybe, yep. something else. Um, lots of little fix-its you can do um, as opposed to just throwing it out the window. Um, you can go back and do a lot of things to adjust this body. And when we, we'll show you when we test fit him, um, put a lot of marks on this and we'll dent him all up again with where the bone structure is. We'll get the head to fit nice. We'll He's going to get dented again and contoured, and you'll notice we can even push in. This foam's nice and light. And this is kind of rough right now. When we get done, um, we'll have the cleaving bone ledge on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, your fin butts will be very nice and smooth. All of the surface area will be real nice. Um, now, you notice our tail. I was thinking of this when we were getting ready. This tail. Um, is shaped like the real walleye's tail meat portion was, this is only going to fit if you skin your fish out far enough. Right. This is only going to fit if you skin your head far enough in your throat latch. A lot of times people will say he doesn't fit and I carved him exactly the measurements he was. If you don't going to be a, a little bit of sanding and beautifying um, and then we better skin mm -hmm. skin the walleye out and then it's time to start test fitting this and correlate this shape to the fish skin shape yep yeah and then from there we're going to go on the mounting and we're going to go on the fence and we're going to go on the heads and we're going to go on the eyes wow. and pretty soon he's going to be just like this and what's your giveaway for liking and sharing and taking some more. I think our form rasp. Give away a form rasp. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, Everybody's the winner. Gonna want one. And if you don't use it on fish, um, you're going to use it on birds, you're going to use it on game heads, you're going to use it on habitat. Habitat. Everything. Um, yep. And the winner of that goes to Christopher Burklaz and Christopher. In Switzerland? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Christopher. <laughs> Oh, speaking of, hold on, hold on, look what he gave me, he gave me a real Swiss army knife. Nice. Oh, no wonder he got one, it's fixed, it's rigged. <laughs> this might take a while to get to you, Christopher, but we'll ship it out. Uh, get it that's there. fun. Okay, what else we got? Thanks for joining us. Yes. Um, I hope you learned something about, maybe you learned that you never want to carve a fish body. Um, <laughs> no. It's not that hard. And it's not. And the way I did not learn how to carve fish bodies, I had to teach myself, and I had a terrible teacher, terrible teacher. And uh, <laughs> it took me two years to teach myself. The graduating class of fish carving that I was in was not very good either. Um, but uh, little by little by little, this gets easier and easier and easier. And... Um, it, it's fast, mm -hmm. um, it's accurate, it's completely custom, you can do anything you want with the fish bodies, and it gets to be fun. Yes, absolutely does. So make sure to share this video and call us with any questions, 1-800-488-3256, or visit us online, and most of the products that they talked about today are on sale through tomorrow, 15% off. should take advantage.